In this video, we'll delve into exploring the secret of the Sphinx, and more specifically, the room hidden within it that could rewrite history. For centuries, the Sphinx has stood as a silent sentinel, guarding the secrets of ancient Egypt. Recently, however, new discoveries have emerged that could change everything we know about this iconic monument. The Sphinx, located on the Giza Plateau, is one of the most recognizable and iconic monuments of ancient Egypt. It is a limestone statue of a lion with a human head and is believed to have been built around 2500 BC during the reign of Pharaoh Khephren, also called Khafre. The Sphinx is considered one of the largest monolithic statues in the world and has stood the test of time, surviving more than 4,500 years. In our video, we will look at the recent discoveries of a hidden chamber in the Sphinx. We will look at the evidence found, theories about the purpose and age of the chamber, and the implications of these discoveries for our understanding of ancient Egyptian history. We will seek the expertise of leading Egyptologists and archaeologists who have participated in the excavations and research surrounding the Sphinx. They will share their personal stories and insights into the ongoing work and discoveries being made. Join us as we delve into the mysteries of the Sphinx and discover the secrets that have been hidden for millennia. Historical Overview of the Sphinx and its Construction The Sphinx, located on the Giza Plateau, is a limestone statue that depicts a lion with a human head. It dates to around 2500 BC, during the reign of Pharaoh Khafre. The construction of the Sphinx is believed to have been a colossal undertaking, estimated to have required hundreds, if not thousands, of workers to build it. The statue is carved from a single piece of limestone believed to have been quarried from the nearby Macadam Formation. The limestone was then transported to the Giza Plateau and sculpted into the shape of the Sphinx. This structure impresses not only with its size, but also with the level of craftsmanship and attention to detail seen in its construction. The face of the statue is believed to be a depiction of Pharaoh Khafre, its features strongly resembling statues of him found in his funerary temple. The Sphinx has been a source of mystery and fascination for centuries and is still shrouded in many unanswered questions. Its history and significance are still being studied and debated by Egyptologists and archaeologists, and new discoveries continue to shed light on its origins. But this is not a monument impressive only because of its size and craftsmanship, but also of great importance for ancient Egyptian society and culture. In ancient times, the Sphinx was believed to be a powerful symbol of the Pharaoh's power and authority, to have religious and spiritual significance, and in many ancient texts, it was called the Guardian of the Horizon. The exact purpose of the Sphinx has been debated among Egyptologists and archaeologists for centuries. One of the most common theories is that it was built as a tomb for Pharaoh Khafre. This theory is supported by the fact that the Sphinx is located near the pyramid and the funerary temple of the Pharaoh. Another theory is that the Sphinx was built to symbolize Khafre's power and authority. It is believed to have depicted the god Horus, son of Osiris, who is considered the patreon of the pharaohs and the embodiment of royal power. Another theory states that it was built as a solar symbol, with its alignment with the stars and the sun believed to have religious significance. Some experts point to the presence of passageways and chambers in nearby pyramids as evidence for this theory. There are other versions, but all of them are still being studied and discussed by experts. The meaning and purpose of the Sphinx are still not fully understood. The Evidence for the Existence of the Hidden Chamber The existence of a hidden chamber in the Sphinx has been a subject of much debate and speculation for years. Recently, however, new technologies have been used to search for the evidence of the presence of the hidden cavity in the Sphinx. One of the most commonly used ones is ground-penetrating radar. It works by sending electromagnetic waves into the ground and measuring the reflections of those waves. This allows researchers to create a 3D image of what lies beneath the Earth's surface. The device can detect any voids that may be present in the statue. Ground-penetrating radar has already been used in several studies of the Sphinx, and some researchers have reported finding evidence of a hidden chamber located under its paws. Other technologies, such as laser scanning and thermal imaging, have also been used to search for hidden chambers. It is worth mentioning that despite the evidence found, there are still some experts who dispute the existence of a hidden chamber and claim that the evidence is inconclusive. 
However, the use of radar and other technologies led to some amazing discoveries. Studies have revealed what appears to be a large chamber beneath the Sphinx's paws, leading many researchers to believe that there is indeed something hidden within the statue. In addition, laser scanning and thermal imaging studies also provide evidence of possible hidden chambers or cavities. These studies revealed variations in temperature and density within the statue, which could be an indication of the presence of hidden spaces. Some scientists have also used geomagnetic studies. These studies have revealed several anomalies in the statue's magnetic field, which are also indications of the possible presence of hidden cavities or chambers. All this data taken together provides strong evidence for the existence of a hidden chamber in the Sphinx. Naturally, research is ongoing, and further research is needed to confirm its existence and determine its purpose and age. Although the evidence for the existence of a chamber in this structure presented by ground-penetrating radar, laser scanning, thermal imaging, and geomagnetic surveys seems convincing, there are still experts who dispute the validity of this evidence. Some critics argue that variations in temperature and density, as well as anomalies in the magnetic field, can be explained by natural causes, such as erosion or geological processes. Others say the evidence is inconclusive and more research is needed. On the other hand, there are some concerns about the technical means used in the studies, as well as about the interpretation of the data. Some experts argue that the methods used in the studies are not sufficient to confirm the existence of such a finding, and that more research is needed to verify the results. Theories about the purpose and age of the hidden chamber. Ultimately, the discovery of the hidden cavity in the Sphinx led to much speculation and debate among experts about its purpose and age. Several theories have been proposed in this regard. One of the most common is that the hidden chamber was built as a tomb for Pharaoh Khafre. This is supported by the proximity of the Sphinx to Khafre's pyramid and by the similarities of the facial features of the Sphinx and the statues of Khafre found in his funerary temple. However, there is no conclusive evidence that the hidden chamber was used as a tomb, and some experts argue that the chamber may have been built for another purpose or by another pharaoh. Another theory states that the hidden chamber is related to the ancient Egyptian belief in the Hall of Records. According to this theory, the Sphinx is believed to be the guardian of a hidden chamber containing records of the history, wisdom, and knowledge of ancient Egypt. The thesis is based on the myth prevalent among the ancient Egyptians and their belief in the existence of the Hall of Records. Finally, there is a theory that the hidden chamber was used for ceremonial or spiritual purposes. It is based on the belief that the Sphinx was a sacred monument and that the chamber was used for ceremonies or rituals related to the adoration of the Sphinx. However, there is no concrete evidence that the hidden chamber was used for these purposes and they remain in the realm of speculation for now. Therefore, the purpose and age of the hidden chamber in the Sphinx remain a mystery. Now more than ever, Egyptologists and archaeologists are continuing the search and study of the monument Different methods are being used to prove the hidden chamber in the Sphinx and gather more information about its potential contents and structure. Various teams of researchers are working on excavations and surveys of the Sphinx and its surroundings to collect more information about the internal opening. Some of these teams are using non-invasive techniques to collect data, while others plan to excavate the area to uncover more information. However, excavations are not always possible due to the fragility of the monument and the need to preserve it for future generations. One of the leading figures in the study of the Sphinx is Dr. John Anthony West, an American author, teacher, and tour guide. Dr. West studied the Sphinx and its hidden chamber for several decades and proposed a theory that the Sphinx is much older than the traditional Egyptological dating. According to Dr. West, the weathering patterns of the Sphinx are consistent with heavy rainfall which would be impossible in the period it is dated to. It is believed to be much older than 4,500 years and predates the time of Pharaoh Khafre. Dr. West suggests that the hidden chamber may be the tomb of a ruler from this earlier period or have another purpose. The researcher also theorizes that the Sphinx's hidden chamber is part of a larger complex of underground chambers that may contain records of ancient history and knowledge, which he calls the Hall of Records. Dr. West suggests that the hidden chamber may be connected to this complex and contain important information about the ancient civilization that erected this architectural marvel. The theory is also supported by Dr. Robert Skok, 
an American geologist and associate professor at Boston University, who has also studied the site for decades. One of the most significant breakthroughs in recent years has been the use of non-invasive technologies. Recently, a team of French archaeologists used a technique called muography to scan the Great Sphinx. They discovered a large void behind the statue's head, which they believe may be a previously undiscovered chamber. This discovery sparked renewed interest in the possibility of a hidden chamber and led to calls for further research and exploration of the area. Another exciting development has been achieved using the latest 3D modeling and virtual reality technologies, creating a detailed reconstruction of the Sphinx and its surrounding complex. This provided new insight into the design and construction of the Sphinx and helped experts better understand its purpose and history. Despite these recent discoveries and breakthroughs, much again remains unknown about the hidden chambers of the Sphinx and their potential significance for our understanding of ancient Egyptian history. Studies and research continue to uncover new information and understanding of this fascinating and enigmatic structure. However, further study and research still have many challenges and limitations. One of the main ones before the experts is the lack of access to the interior of the Sphinx. The statue is a national treasure and a major tourist attraction, and destructive excavation is not an option. Non-invasive techniques can provide valuable information, but they have limitations and may not be able to provide a complete picture of the interior of the Sphinx. Despite the challenges, studies and research continue. If the existence of a hidden chamber in the Sphinx is true, it could potentially rewrite our understanding of the history and construction of this iconic structure. For example, Suppose the chamber turns out to be a tomb. In that case, it could signify the presence of a previously unknown pharaoh or ruler and provide new insight into the politics and power dynamics of ancient Egypt. Furthermore, if the hidden chamber turns out to be related to the ancient Egyptian belief in the Hall of Records, as Dr. John West suggests, it could provide a wealth of new information about ancient history and knowledge, offering a glimpse into the advanced knowledge and understanding of the ancient Egyptians the potential implication of these findings, if proven true, could change our understanding of ancient Egyptian technology, engineering, history, and culture. What is hidden beneath the sands of Egypt has for years excited some of the greatest explorers and archaeologists. Some of the most mysterious artifacts have been found on this territory to this day. Culture, customs, buildings, and objects that, after finding them, not only do not give answers, but cause more and more questions and endless international discussions. In this video, we will look at some of the discoveries that have completely changed the way scientists view ancient Egypt. The Egyptian settlement older than the pharaohs, Tel El Samara. An Egyptian French archaeological expedition has discovered one of the most ancient villages in the Nile Delta. It dates back to the Neolithic period. The expedition was led by Dr. Frederick Guillot, and the great discovery was announced by the Ministry of Antiquities. It turns out to be very important, due to the fact that pottery, stone tools, and other evidence of human habitation have been found at the site. This gives confirmation to another theory that in the wetlands of the Delta, around 5000 BC, there were stable communities. What is even more interesting, is that this was approximately 2,500 years before the construction of the Pyramids of Giza, the Old Kingdom. The Neolithic settlement is located in the area of Tel El Samara, about 140 kilometers north of Cairo. Dr. Ayman Ashmawi, who is in charge of Egypt's archaeology sector, says that the remains of buildings in the lower parts of the area have been successfully excavated. He adds that this is a major breakthrough in research as buildings and settlement structures in the area have not been well studied until now, except at Sais. The head of the expedition, Dr. Guillot, said that much evidence of human activity was found, such as numerous storage silos in which a large number of animal bones and plant remains were found. According to Guillot, the discoveries in the Tel El Samara area, which have been underway since 2015, have given archaeologists a unique opportunity to understand a lot about the prehistoric communities that inhabited the Delta for millennia before the First Dynasty. The ancient history of Egypt is believed to begin when Lower and Upper Egypt were united around 3000 BC. 
the dating of the newly discovered site clearly indicates that the settlement belongs to the Middle or Late Neolithic period, that is, around 6600 to 4700 BC. Research shows that this is a period in which ancient Egyptian agriculture began its rise. In addition, animal husbandry, for the purpose of subsistence, becomes very important for society. Cattle, sheep, goats, and pigs are raised, and fishing is also practiced. Dr. Nadia Haider, from the Ministry in Charge of Egyptian, Greek, and Roman Antiquities, said the analysis of the organic materials found would help shed more light on the early settlers of the Delta and the origins of agriculture in Egypt. Modern scholars share a theory that agriculture was brought to Egypt via the Levant. Turin Erotic Papyrus This is perhaps one of the most unique finds related to ancient Egyptian culture. The papyrus is more than 3,000 years old and contains explicit erotic images. The so-called erotic papyrus of Turin researchers have come across in the ancient settlement of Deir el Medina. It contains unique images along with funny scenes involving animals. The assessment given for the drawings themselves is that they are of the highest artistic value. The artifact is also called the Egyptian Kama Sutra. In the 19th century, the famous French orientalist Jean-Francois Champollion spoke about the Turin papyrus, calling it an image of monstrous obscenity. In 1824, the artifact fell into the Italian collection Drovetti and immediately became a hot topic of discussion. Dear El Medina, the site where the artifact was discovered has the reputation of being an old settlement of artisans and artists in ancient Tebessa. The craftsmen from the Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens lived there. The painted scroll is dated to the period 1186 to 1017 BC. The papyrus is 2 meters and 60 centimeters long and 21 centimeters wide, well preserved and painted on both sides. This allows the incredible images to be explored and provide us with a different insight into a side of ancient Egyptian culture that has been completely unknown to us until now. The scroll depicts drawings of animals copying and mocking human activities, such as playing musical instruments, dressing as soldiers, or playing board games. The rest of the surface is filled with erotic images. Too little is known about the find despite the intensive study of the artifact. One suggestion is that the Turin papyrus was probably owned by a high-ranking person in ancient Egypt. The work emphasizes the tension of the actions and the awkward, acrobatic poses in which some men interact with the women. The physical appearance of the men themselves is supposed to be more of a caricature of the lower class. They are represented with bald heads and unshaven faces, which rather refers them to as the representatives of the social class of workers and peasants who do not have the time and means to take care of their bodies. Another interesting fact is that sexuality is almost never demonstrated in the monuments and objects of the elite. This suggests that the activity depicted here is intended to be obscene. This theory suggests that the expensive papyrus was intended for upper-class people who may have taken pleasure in making themselves more than lower society, who they seem to regard as coarse and vulgar lechers. However, this theory has not been proven and is somewhat controversial because in the papyrus itself, women are depicted according to the classical beauty canons of Egyptian art, which suggests that it was done deliberately with the intention of the whole of the scene to pique the interest of the viewer. It is the only known ancient Egyptian papyrus with erotic images and has been the subject of intense research since its discovery. Jokingly, however, in the end, we ask the question, was this not the ancient version of the popular nowadays Playboy? The Lost City of Gold Professor Betsy Ryan, an Egyptologist at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, said in connection to the discovery that this is the second most significant find after the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. The discovery of the lost city will not only give us a glimpse into the lives of the ancient Egyptians at a time when the empire was at its richest, but will help to find answers to one of the greatest mysteries. Why Akhenaten and Nefertiti decided to move to Amarna, Brian shares. Meanwhile, in Egypt, Discoveries continue in the largest ancient metropolis, the golden lost city, Aten, was hidden beneath the sands near Luxor in the Valley of the Kings for thousands of years. The mission is under the leadership of the famous archaeologist Dr. Zahi Hoas. The golden city is more than 3,400 years old and dates back to the reign of Amenhotep III, having been used by Tutankhamun and I, the archaeological team said. It is called Akhetaten, Horizon of Aten, or sometimes simply Aten. 
and is one of the most important cities of antiquity. It is also called the Golden City because it was established in the Golden Age of Egypt in 1391 BC. Metropolis tells the story of the daily life of the ancient Egyptians and the beginning of their worship of the ancient Egyptian god Aten. Scientists also believe that in the western part of the city, they will find much evidence of Tutankhamun. Ali Abu Dashish, an expert archaeologist, shares that the city and its finds provide even clearer evidence that ancient Egyptian culture was based on death and resurrection. Jewelry such as rings, amulets, and many artifacts have been found, including bricks with the seals of Amenhotep III, precious stones for making necklaces and bracelets, and ceramics that tell Egypt's connection with the New Kingdom. Excavations began in September 2020 between the temples of Ramses III and Amenhotep III near Luxor, 500 kilometers south of the capital Cairo. Almost a year later, the first several neighborhoods were discovered. They included a bakery, administrative, and residential areas. The structures are filled with everyday objects, many related to the artistic and industrial production that sustained the pharaoh's capital. There are homes where workers probably lived. Archaeologists say that the discovery is unique in itself, as the artifacts are perfectly preserved, untouched for thousands of years, as if they were left by the ancient Egyptians yesterday. According to historical records, the site once housed three of Amenhotep III's palaces and the administrative and industrial center of the empire. The pharaoh inherited an empire that stretched from the Euphrates to Sudan and died around 1354 BC, having ruled for nearly four decades. The mission expects to uncover untouched tombs full of treasure. The Valley of the Golden Mummies The Valley of the Golden Mummies is a huge funerary complex in the Baharia Oasis and in the western desert of Egypt. It dates back to the Greco-Roman period. In 1996, Zahi Hawass and his team of archaeologists for months discovered about 250 mummies aged about 2,000 years. Continued excavations and studies eventually showed that the total number of mummies in the valley exceeded 10,000. Many of the mummies were still preserved in very good condition. They were decorated in a variety of styles. The mummies in Bahariya can be divided into four styles, which are supposed to have determined the person's position in society. The first, which is found on about 60 of the mummies, is characterized by the fact that they have a gilded mask covering the face and a gilded vest depicting various scenes of gods and goddesses on the chest. The second style is covered with cartonage, a type of material used in ancient Egyptian burial masks from the first intermediate period to the Roman era. It is made of layers of linen or papyrus covered with plaster. These gilded so-called cartonages depict scenes of gods such as Anubis, the god of mummification, and his four children. In the third style, there is no decoration with gold or cardboard, and the mummy is placed in an anthropoid, that is, a ceramic coffin. In the fourth style, only covering with linen cloth is observed. Along with each mummy, various items were buried, such as jewelry, ceramic dinnerware, wine pitchers, and Ptolemaic coins. The mummies found in the tombs of the Bahariya Oasis from the Roman period today paint the picture of the life of the people back then. They and the artifacts found reveal that people during this period were rich because they could afford to gild. Each mummy is different with different styles and artifacts representing individual personalities. Dr. Zahi Hawa says that workshops were everywhere, and being a craftsman was one of the main occupations in Baharia at that time. The population of Egypt during the Roman period was about 7 million people. Dr. Hawa estimates that approximately 30,000 people lived in Baharia. The production of wine from dates and grapes was the main industry, contributing to the wealth of the population. Mummification during this period reached its peak. Dr. Hawass mentions that it was then that an innovation in the method of mummification began, placing sticks made of reeds on both sides of the mummy to cover it with cloth. Through this method, the mummies are now much more stable and durable compared to before. The preparation of the mummies began in a workshop called Vab. The god Anubis is supposed to have watched the whole process. According to Egyptian religious beliefs, the hearts of the deceased are placed on one side of the scale. The feather of the goddess of truth, Mat, is placed on the other side of the scales. If the feather and the heart did not balance each other, it meant that a huge animal was waiting to eat the deceased. If the scales are balanced, then the god Horus will take the deceased to meet the god Osiris and the goddess Isis. 
Thank you for your tremendous support. We read your comments very carefully, although we are not able to respond to all of them. Let us know what topics you would like to see. More interesting knowledge you can find in our channel. Don't forget to support us by sharing this video and subscribing to the channel.